Hello, my name is Mr Wick and I'm one of the teachers at Archer Academy School. Uh, I teach science and I have been teaching at Archer Academy for about five years. I'm really excited to look through one of the lessons that you might be coming up with when you join the Archer Academy. Uh, today we're going to look at this idea of variation. Now variation is an incredible uh, concept because it gives us all these amazing differences that you can see in this picture here. So as a starter, what I'd like you to do is look at each of these students and I'd like you to list as many differences between them as you can. Also, see if you can list any differences that they might have that you can't see here. So things that you can't see just from looking at their faces, but through different aspects of them, maybe parts of their personality, parts of things they might be good or bad at. And as a challenge question, I'd love to see any one of you who are able to think of causes of these differences and why these children have these differences. So if you'd like to make a pause now video, you can just to see what differences you might have had. For those that have uh, written down a number of different differences, I'd be really interested to see what you have to say. Here are some things that I got. So I got this idea that they might be different in their eye colours, they're different in their skin colours, their hair colours, their height, their hair length, the shape of their eyes, their shoe size, their size of their hands, their personality could be different, how, how good they are at sports, how good they are at art, and millions more. And I do literally mean millions more. In fact, I'm going to highlight this word millions because it's so important just how many differences there are between us as human beings. And I think these differences are brilliant. If we didn't have these differences, we wouldn't have so many incredible pieces of technology, pieces of art, uh, buildings in the entire world. Loads of different ways of doing this life. And uh, these are all types of this amazing word of variation right? Variation. I wonder if any keen-eyed English students can see what word is in the word variation that they might have seen before. We're actually going to look at that word a little bit later, but these are types of variation, differences between people. Can you, wonderful year sixes of Archer Academy, can you think of a definition for variation, a definition for variation? So how would you define this word variation? And give you a second or two just to work that out. You're welcome to pause the video to write down your thoughts of what you might define variation as. For those that have unpaused the video, you're welcome to write down that the key definition here is that variation is the different characteristics between organisms. Now this word here, characteristics, this is the idea of everything we've seen before. So we have characteristics such as the colour of our bodies, like our eyes, our skin, or our hair. Maybe characteristics of how tall we are. Maybe characteristics of our personality. Some people have different characteristics than others. You will obviously know that people in your year group will have different characteristics. Some people um, are really giving and kind and they... they um, really love to share what they have to have with other people. Some people, their characteristics are to be helpful and some people like to help other people. There are loads of different characteristics that people have. This is that idea. Characteristics between organisms, which are living things like you, like me, like plants. There can be differences in characteristics between plants. This is this idea of variation. Let's have a quick three minute task and it's an idea of think of someone who. What's about, what's about to come up is a number of different characteristics. I'd like you to think of people that you know who have similar characteristics to you in these uh, aspects of the world. So here, let's have a look. Who of you have the same hair colour, the same clothes, same size feet that you might like, that you have, sorry, the same clothes that you might like to wear, similar hairstyle, same colour eyes, a similar nose shape, maybe the same height as you, maybe the same size hand, and I'd love to see if you can think of someone who has a characteristic you can think of that has in common with you. As an example for me personally, I am wonderfully ginger, as you can tell, and I know that my friend Janina also has the same hair colour to me, which I think is brilliant that she has that. But she doesn't have the same clothes. There are other people in the world that have the same clothes. This top I'm wearing, lovely little uh, plant life on it. I know that my friend Matthew, he loves similar clothes that are really 
wonderful like this and got lots of um, different plants and things on it. So I'm going to delete this so you can get that done. What I'd like you to do is in three minutes time, um, make sure you've seen if you can uh, fill in this as much as possible. We'll give you that time now if you want to time yourself for three minutes. Okay, I hope your three minutes are up. I'd be really interested to see who you filled in here. Now, isn't it interesting how you may have some people that you've written down in this that were seemingly fulfilling two or more boxes. So for example, uh, my friend Matthew that we saw before had the same uh, clothes style. He also actually has the same color eyes. We both have beautiful blue eyes, but he doesn't have a similar nose to me. He has very different uh, foot size and hand size and weight and hairstyle and color hair. But interestingly, he, he's got this that's similar. Now, there are differences between us, and I'd like to look a little bit about those specific differences, those specific forms of variation today. So what did you see in that investigation? Well, did you were you able to fill every single box in in three minutes? Why? Was it easy? Was it easy to know lots of different people who are different to you or similar to you? How did you fill them in? Did you think, hmm, with their nose shape and trying to think in your mind, what's their shape of their nose? You might have even gone to the mirror and looked at your own nose shape and thought, huh, okay, that's the shape of my nose. What about other people? Do they have similar shaped noses? I wonder if any people here might have thought of their siblings or their parents or cousins that might have had similar shaped or eyes or hair color as them. And that's a really interesting part because a lot of the time your uh, family will have similarities to you. But why? Well, different people look and behave differently. No one is the same. Now, I know that incredibly smart students here listening might think of this fabulous word of twins or triplets or triplets or quadruplets. Right. Or even. Uh, sync tuplets and it goes on and on from there onwards okay we've got a number of different ways that we can have similar children and uh, did you know that the biggest number of children one person has had at once was not five not six not seven children but eight children at once, which were named octuplets. Like an octopus, oct means eight, octuplets. Incredible. Now, these octuplets were actually a mixture of boys and girls. So they weren't all identical. But even if they were all identical like twins, no one is the same. There would still be small differences between them. We all vary from one another. This is why it's called variation. That word vary comes in the word variation. All of these people that you see in front of you, they all vary in many different ways. They've kind of been lined up from one side to the other regarding skin color, but there's so many other pieces of variation that you can see. You can obviously see how tall they are is different. You can see their hair colors are different. You can even see their hairstyles are slightly different. There's so many different wonderful variations that we have in front of us, and I'd like to look at those two types now. This is new information, so you might want to write this down, but variation can be one of two things, either inherited or environmental. Now let's look at what those words mean. So you might want to write down these terms, inherited or environmental. I think you should pause the video now and see if you can tell me what you think the differences are between them. OK, you may have paused the video and you might want to come back to talk to us about what these answers are. Well, inherited variation is in is variation that's inherited from your parents, from your parents. So your mother and your father, they will have made you alive and you are a part of them. There's half of you that's a part of your mother and a half of, a half of you that's part of your father. Here are some examples of inherited variation. Your eye color, your color of your eyes is very much from uh, the from your parents, from what's known as the genetics from your parents. We're going to get into that a little bit later. Uh, your Whether you have lobeless or lobed ears, I don't know if you can see with me, but my ears are lobeless, they're detached. But some people 
have their ears which are kind of attached to their faces. I wonder if you or you know anyone that has that. That's again inherited. Your natural hair colour, my lovely hair colour of ginger is natural. I was born with this and that is from my parents. There are some people that might dye their hair as you can see on this screen, this wonderful array of colours that the woman on the right has, but that's not natural. She didn't get that from her parents. She had that as part of her environment because environmental variation is variation caused by your surroundings, right? Or things that are different for you, things that change within you based on after you've been born. So examples is this, for example, your diet, your health, your ed education or your lifestyle. They'll all affect how your environmental variation is, how different you are um, for example, uh, of, of your body shape because of maybe what you eat, or for example, your health because of maybe what you eat, or for example, your education, so what you know about the world and what you understand about the world um, can be based on envir environmental variation, or maybe your lifestyle. Some people watching may be brilliant at riding bicycles or running or walking around, um, and they might have a difference in how they are in, in their lives. Another thing that's environmental variation is a dyed hair colour. So your hair colour, if you dye it a different colour, that is due to your environment, right? Due to your environment, your environment, your, your outside things. After you were born, you decided to change your hair colour. And one thing is interesting is your scars, for example. Now, I personally was born with a birthmark. That is from my parents. But as you can see, I don't know if you can see on the video, here I've got a little scar on my on my um, my forearm, that was from a little burn I had when I was quite young, and that was not from my parents. That wasn't something that I get genetically. It's something that happened through my life, through my environment, and it changed me that way. Now, what we're going to do is a quick quiz. We're going to have a couple minutes where I'd like you to tell me which of the uh, variation that's about to come up are inherited, so things that you get from your parents environmental things that you get from living your life or caused by a bit of both and that's an interesting one there are some aspects of variation which are actually caused by a bit of both your parents and how you've been uh, brought up or uh, the world around you so what i'd like you to do is make this table in your books i'll show you how to make a table what i would do is draw two lovely lines like this and then a line across. Mine's not very neat, I don't have a ruler to use. Here I would write, for example, inherited. Here I would write environmental. And here I would write both, for example. And then you can have lines as to which, uh, of, for inputting the data that we will be uh, that will be coming up in a second, okay? So that's one way that you can do that. I'm gonna get rid of this because the words are actually gonna come up in the space that I've drawn these lovely words, inherited, environmental, and both. But what I'd like you to do is construct this table and write down the words that are gonna come up in this area. It's gonna be a words that are gonna come up in this area into that table. Are you gonna get it all right? As a challenge, if you finish within two minutes, I'd like you to add your own inherited or environment or both inherited environmental factors into this table. So your two minutes begin in three, two, one. Here they are. Skin color, eye color, weight, having a scar, speaking German, blood group, good at football, good tennis player, tall, long hair, pointy nose, lobed ear, or pierced nose. See what you can do. Two minutes start now. Okay, I think your two minutes are up. Let's see what you've put in compared to what I've got. Here are my answers. In inherited are your eye colour, your blood group, your pointy nose, if you have a pointy or a not so pointy nose, or how you're born with, that's how your nose is, whether you have a lobed or a lobeless ear, like I showed you before, and the colour of your skin. Caused by environmental factors is whether you've got a pierced nose or not. You won't be born with a pierced nose. If you were, that's kind of strange, but yes, I guess uh, it's not really possible. I've never seen it in my life before. Whether you have a scar, for example, whether you speak German is based on where you were born, not about your genetics and your parents, uh, um, the genetics of your parents, and the length of your hair, that's based on environmental factors. So, for example, whether you cut your hair or not.
Caused by both in environmental and inherited is indeed your weight. So for example, you have genetics that can impact how heavy you are, but also the amount you eat, the amount you exercise can impact your weight. Whether you're good at football or not can be based on genetics. So do you have the genetics to uh, grow muscles in a certain way? But also, have you been practicing football? The same thing is uh, with being good or bad at tennis, um, and also how tall you are. If you're particularly tall or particularly short, that's based on your parents, but also based on the food that you eat and also uh, the uh, exercise that you might do in life. Really interesting. If you have any questions, please send me something. I'd love to hear if you're not sure about any of this. The next question that we're going to answer today is what do you think causes variation? Why does variation happen? Now, we know it's pretty straightforward that variation of what you look like after you're born, those can be pretty straightforward. If you eat a certain way or if you're quite clumsy and you might fall over a few times and you get some boo-boos on you and sometimes that can cause marks, that's quite obvious. But what causes variation that you get from your parents? The stuff you're born with, like your eye colour and your hair colour, how does that change you? Well, I'm going to show you three pictures and like you to have a think. Here's my first picture. I wonder if anyone knows what this is. Here's my second picture. I wonder if anyone's getting a bit closer. And here's my third picture. I wonder if these can help you. Well, for the particularly keen and well-versed in biological genetic science will know that this wonderful shape here is called D. N A DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid. Right? Deoxyribonucleic acid. Now these words deoxyribonucleic is actually one word, but I thought I'd separate it just to show you where the letters D N A come from. Now this is quite a big word and I'm not expecting you to know it. I'd be really interested to know if anyone can say it out loud. Deoxyribonucleic acid. This DNA is incredible and DNA is what makes you you. A whole bunch of DNA altogether makes this wonderful thing which is called a chromosome. Right, a chromosome. A chromosome, you have 23 pairs of them 23 from your mum and 23 from your dad and inside these chromosomes are these sections of chromosome down here that we call genes and those genes this is now GCSE stuff I mean this is really cool those genes are made out of um, four different parts A, T, C and G part A, part T, part G and part C and the order of those A, T, C's and G's make up your full DNA. Your DNA is made up of uh, the order of A, T, C's and G's. For example, it could be A, A, T, C, C, G, G, and it would continue for many, 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 many different letters all in one. They all line up to make the genetics of who you are. There is a gene in your body that is in charge of what color your eyes are going to be. And there's a gene in someone else's body, which is in charge of their eye colour, which will be a slightly different uh, set of A, T, C's and G's. It'll be a slightly different order, which will make either the blue eye colour like I've got, or brown or green or anything in between. Variation, inherited variation, is caused by this beautiful thing called DNA, which locks up to make these things called chromosomes and sections of those chromosomes called genes are what ultimately make you, you. Now, the last thing I'd like to do, and this is over to you now, is for you to answer this question, is variation a good thing? We know that variation is all over the world. There's variation in humans, in all different non-human animals and in plants, but there are some organisms that aren't varied at all. Those organisms are, for example, bacteria, viruses, fungi. These are all completely the same within their own uh, species. So one species of bacteria will be completely the same. One species of virus, like this COVID-19 that we're looking at today, that we're looking at, this COVID-19, they're all exactly the same. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? 
that they're the same and that we're all different? I'm not sure. I'd like you to tell me a bit about that. So do some epic science research and give me an answer to this question. The link that I've got here, I'd ex I think would be a great start to seeing if you think variation is good or bad. Okay, it's been a real pleasure to talk to you all today. I hope you're doing brilliantly and I look forward to seeing you in school pretty soon. Okay, bye-bye.